Hello and welcome to the knife tutorial in the Cocos 2 DX C++ physics series and in this part we're going to be looking at velocity. This part will assume you've done the fifth part of this series. If you haven't done it, there'll be a link in the description to the source code. So velocity is the rate at which an object, object's position, for example, a sprite changes. Setting this allows us to basically move our object along the war x and y axis. We will temporarily disable gravity to illustrate the use of velocity, but gravity can be enabled if your game requires it. So let's just go ahead and disable gravity. And you can also, actually we'll cover that in a moment, we'll cover velocity limit in a moment. So to set the velocity, you do bright body, set velocity, and then in here we're just going to do vect. And we're going to specify the x value and the y value. And I'm going to put, put 100 for x and 247 for y. And now, if we just run this, it will our object will move with a velocity of 100 by 247. It's moving. It is bouncing around. It is slowing down, and the reason it's slowing down is to do with this physics material that we set. And because obviously it's colliding with the edge body, that's got a different physics material to this, I believe, because the material default is different. So you'll have to experiment with that to get the sort of gameplay experience that you want. But you can also set a velocity limit, which basically prevents the speed of an object from going above the limit. An example of an object's velocity may increase is when objects are colliding. A more specific example would be if an object collided with another object from behind and in real life you could think of a car crashing into another car from behind, the car in front would move faster aka velocity would increase, you may want to control the maximum velocity and you can easily do that by doing sprite body set velocity limit and you don't specify a vector or two values, you specify one so you prevent any of the velocities from going above this value. I'm just going to put 500. It won't affect this tutorial or this example simply because we don't have enough elements to increase the velocity but you can set it like this. Cocos 2DX also provides the means to set the object's linear damping, basically friction that may occur upon the object whilst moving to slow it down. And to set that you just do sprite body set linear damping and this basically you specify a value which will decrease the velocity every frame so I'm gonna put mm, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 so every second assuming 60 frames a second it will slow down 30 frames I mean or 30 points now if we just run this uh, as you can see, before without the linear damping, it bounced and then it went all the way down here, bounced again and bounced here and started going up. But now, because of the linear damping, it has essentially just come to a standstill. It's still spinning a little, a little bit, but that's not the regular velocity. Low note before we go, when setting the velocity, like most things in programming, especially in game programming, try to make it dynamic and factor in the screen size. For example, so it looks like it's moving the same speed on an iPad and an iPad retina. Here is a good example. We was creating our game Superjet Bunny a few months ago and we were with a link in the description to be able to check it out. It's on iOS and Android. When we was creating it and we had the background scrolling, we didn't factor in any sort of screen size. So on an iPad Retina, it looked like it was moving really slowly. And on, uh, uh, actually, this was the case for all the objects that were moving. On an iPad Retina, it looked really slow and it was too easy. On a regular iPad and an iPhone, it looked the optimal speed. So it was great. And then my mate tra tried it on a basically a lower end Android device, sort that out here, a lower end Android device, and it was ridiculously fast. I remember him saying to me that the game's too hard, and I, and I just looked at him thinking, is it? it? On my device, it looks great. And then 
my other mate was like, oh, on my iPad Retina, it don't work so well. Oh, it's just too slow. And then we checked it out because we didn't have factory screen. So, so you want a factory screen size. We talked about multi-resolution support and factoring in screen size, so you can check out that series. But that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonosystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. All the required links for source code will also be in the description. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at force or applying force to an object. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.